This is Morocco, on the North Africa, just below Spain. About 99% of its population are Arabs and Berbers, Islam being the main religion. Even so, relations with Western countries are relaxed and it has free trade agreements with the European Union and the United States. Morocco is a good choice for a first visit to North Africa. Despite all the differences, it still has a lot in common with its European neighbors. First, let's look at some basic things about Morocco. It's about the same size as the Washington state in the US. Most Moroccans live in the fertile coastal plains in the north and west. Mountain ranges occupy much of the interior and the High Atlas Mountains. Population is about 26.4 million and major ethnic groups are Arabs and Berbers. Arabic and French are the most spoken languages. In 1912 it was divided into French and Spanish territories until 1956 when it gained independence. However, three Spanish enclaves still exist on the north coast causing some dispute every now and then between the two. Morocco's coast have been favored by European tourists for many years. It's nearby and also one of the most stable countries in North Africa. Tourists from Spain, France, Germany and United Kingdom have visited popular beach resorts for years. Even Finns have visited here constantly, especially in Agadir. It was kind of a surprise for me to be greeted in Finnish by hotel personnel when I arrived. The hotel seems to be often populated by Finnish tourist groups. Not now though, it's quiet at Christmas time. Still, it's certain that there have been a lot of them here. Almost every single restaurant here has their menu available in Finnish. Agadir reminds me a lot of Spain and Portugal, but I came here to look for something different. No sunbathing for me this time. This is indeed a good place for that, but perhaps better when weather is warmer. Even so, I'll continue my journey inland. Marrakesh, here I come! <laughs> Agadir is blue, Marrakesh is ochre pink. Weather is here almost as pleasant as in Agadir, the temperature being during the day somewhere between 20 and 25 Celsius. The wind is missing though, making the air a bit more dry. During the night temperature drops to somewhere around 15 or 10 Celsius. Sure, that's not much, but this is the coldest time of a year after all. And I'm a Finn, so I am just fine. In North Africa, these are called Medinas, walled old towns with many maze-like narrow streets. Medina still means city or town in modern-day Arabic and that's what these are, the ancient heritage of the Arab and Berber culture. Because of their narrow nature, they are often free from car traffic. It's very easy to get lost in these, but at least here in Marrakesh, people are happy to tell you the right way. Actually, some people told me directions to the main square even though I didn't ask anything. I guess I look like a bit lost. If not physically, culturally I am here in the middle of an unfamiliar place and culture. And this exciting state of temporary dislocation is the reason I came here in the first place, isn't it? Through these streets we get to the main square, also known as Yamal Afna. It's one of the busiest squares in Africa, full of various ethnic performers, acrobats, musicians, snake charmers and more. Despite what you may think at first, many aren't for tourists. Storytellers tell their stories in Arabic or Berber, making me doubt that tourists are their target group. Nevertheless, this place itself is worth seeing in its own right. No matter what people sell here, they're all after your money, right? I'm very cynical about these things, trust me. That's also the reason I'm surprised every time I encounter someone who doesn't fit well into that category. This nice fellow is a good example. First I thought that he wants to sell me something. But eventually all he asked was me to take a picture of him and me together. 
And no, he didn't ask any money for it. Didn't even try to sell me his dried fruits and peanuts. By going straight to business isn't necessarily a very good way to succeed. In some ways trading seems to be an art form. If he's friendly to me today, perhaps tomorrow when I want some dried fruits, I'll buy them from him. Hmm? Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Murphy. Nice to meet you, Eddie Murphy. After the sun has gone away, dozens of food stalls rise up against the night, changing Yama Lafna into a huge kitchen. This is Lobot. You're from Africa. South Africa. Even though you might see foreign tourists here and there, most of the customers are locals. Is it safe to eat, you might ask? If you're sensitive and get the collie bubbles in Spain, I suggest you to bring something along to help with an upset stomach. I didn't get anything while I lived in Spain, neither from here. A good basic rule is that it's safe, as long as the locals eat it too. Time for a little pause from walking. The weather has chilled considerably, so what could be better than a hot cup of Moroccan mint tea? It consists of green tea and mint leaves, and it does have caffeine, which I consider as a good thing. Sometimes it's served with sugar in it, but most of the time you have to add it yourself. Nevertheless, it's delicious and absolutely fresh. I'm not a tea person myself, but this is good stuff. The Kotobia Muske is the largest muske in Marrakesh and also one of the most well-known muskes in the whole country. The minaret of the mosque shows how European and Moroccan culture have blended through history. A very similar angular model were also used in Spain and Portugal for Catholic churches. Except the guarding surrounding it, this mosque only allows Muslims. According to what some people have said, we are expecting to see lots of oppressed women walking in their burgas. The fact that they aren't very widely seen here, only occasionally, may be hard to swallow for the people who only want to see the extreme side of Islam. Instead, it's common to see mother and daughter walking together, both wearing a headscarf, the mother wearing more traditional clothes and the daughter with similar jeans to western girls of her age. Religion reminds me how some kind of divine protection, uh, divine protection, can be useful when walking here, because this traffic is quite intense, and not so predictable. According to some statistics, this is actually the most dangerous thing for tourists in Morocco. That's the most common way to get yourself into trouble. How about trying some extreme traveling? Rent a car here and go drive around the country. What an awesome way to die, isn't it? It's time to have a cup of coffee. Just like the mint tea, it's very good here. At least cafe noir. I like my coffee black. Okay, okay. Let's deal with these Moroccan alcoholic beverages a bit. Well, availability is restricted, but not as much as in many other Islamic countries. The only place I found some is a relatively large supermarket. Alcoholic drinks are here quite expensive when compared with other products, but of course cheaper than in Finland. The local drinks are the cheapest of course. Yes, beers, wines and even some hard liquors are produced in Morocco. None of them have been surprisingly good though, just average stuff. Of course Erna drinks anything, but during this journey he has been less drunk than usual. Our journey continues from here to Essaoira, located on the west coast just above Agadir. But that's another story for another episode. See you next time! That's a good point. How to prevent divine forces to intervene? Well, just be yourself. The solution is drunk driving. If you rent a car and drive drunk in a Muslim country, there is no any god that can protect you. Period. It works! Fun!